Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on meiosis. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Sex is beneficial for a species because it increases genetic variation. So we're going to circle back to that at the end of the lesson. First, let's talk about two types of cells that are in our body. Let's give you a little bit of an overview. So first, we have body cells, and we also have sex cells. Now, body cells are the cells that make up any tissue in the body, like your teeth, blood vessels, liver, brain, bone marrow, all of that stuff. And the sex cells are very specifically, in humans, something like the sperm and the ovum. So these things come together to form a zygote, and uh, that's how fertilization occurs. So if we look at these cells individually, we can see that body cells are what we call diploid. That means they have two copies of every chromosome. And we sometimes refer to that as 2N. That means they have two copies of the N number of chromosomes that there are in whatever uh, organism you're talking about. Uh, they're also called somatic cells. One copy of each of those chromosomes come from each parent. And then they are produced by mitosis. So body cells, when you need to make more of them, you go uh, through mitosis to get new ones, to get new daughter cells. Now, sex cells are also called gametes. Uh, they come from germ cells, which are the cells in testes or ovaries and things like that. Uh, these cells are haploid, meaning they only have one copy of every chromosome. And so, like I said, an example of this is sperm or egg cells uh, in humans. And these gametes, or sex cells, are produced by meiosis. And that's the process that we're going to talk about in this video, how it actually happens. It's a little bit like mitosis, but there's a couple of differences here. So let's look at a chart that compares these two. So mitosis on the left, you see produces genetically identical cells. So remember, both the parent cell and the daughter cell are exactly the same uh, in how the chromosomes are. Um, the parent cell is diploid, meaning it has two copies of every chromosome, and both daughter cells are also diploid. Um, mitosis takes place throughout the whole uh, lifetime of the organism, and it is also asexual reproduction. Now, if you look at meiosis, it's a little bit different. We know it's not... Uh, diploid cells that get made, but haploid cells that get made. Um, the, uh, the cells that are produced, the daughter cells, are genetically unique. They are not like the parent cells at all. Uh, and we'll talk about how that happens. Now, meiosis takes place at very specific times in the organism's life cycle uh, when the organism is producing something like sperm or eggs. And this is uh, the, the whole crux for sexual reproduction. So let's talk about meiosis, a little, little overview here. So there's a diagram here that shows uh, meiosis. Now there are two cellular divisions, not one, two divisions that are taking place in meiosis, and they're conveniently called meiosis one and meiosis two. Now the big difference between these, I want you to understand and remember this, is meiosis one is all about the separation of homologous chromosomes, and meiosis two is all about the separation of sister chromatids. Now we'll look at that in some diagrams, but let's start with meiosis 1, the first division. So this is a very initial stage. It's very similar to mitosis, what you've learned. And the germ cell that we start with is diploid. It's 2N. So now we're going to go through the G1 phase and think about, okay, what happens there? Cell grows. It makes organelles. No problem. And then the S phase is when the cell replicates its DNA. So you can see right there, look, cell replicated its DNA. So now we go through the G2 phase, which is where it's preparing for division. So far, we're a lot like mitosis. Okay, so let's start here with prophase 1. And one of the things that happens during prophase 1 is called crossing over. That's when you have homologous chromosomes, which are chromosomes that contain the same genes. They get really close to each other, and they start actually exchanging some genetic material. So you can see in the, the blue and the purple chromosomes there, um, from the left side to the right side, they've actually crossed over and now you can see they've exchanged some of that material before any division has occurred. So this results as a, as a new combination of those genes or what we call recombination. Okay, so now we're going to move on to metaphase 1 because after prophase is metaphase. And the main thing that happens here is something called independent assortment. Now that just means those homologous chromosomes that have crossed over and done their thing, they're going to line up in the middle on the metaphase plate, something that you already know about but they can line up uh, in two different ways. One chromosome can be on the left or the other one can be on the left. So there are two possible arrangements for each chromosome. So that is called independent assortment. 
So the number of configurations that you can have is based on the number of chromosomes that are possible. So in this example here, there's only two chromosomes, and so there are only four different ways that we can line those chromosomes up because two to the power of two chromosomes would be four. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So the number of configurations that you can have through independent assortment is two to the 23rd power. So that's tons and tons of different combinations. And that's one of the reasons we have so much variation in something like humans. So now we're gonna to go to these ones which are actually pretty easy. You've got anaphase one, which is where you pull those homo homologs or homologous chromosomes apart. So there's your separation of homologous chromosomes. And then telophase one and cytokinesis one, uh, you know those very well, telophase and cytokinesis from uh, mitosis lesson. So now you can see that they are actually pulling apart. But we're not quite done yet. We're done with meiosis one, and we now have two new cells that are haploid because there's only one set of chromosomes in each one. But now we're going to undergo a second division, and that's called meiosis two. Now I'm not going to go through all the different phases here because you already know prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But what I'm going to show you here in this diagram is you're going to see that the uh, two daughter cells that we got from meiosis one are not going to undergo a, a growth phase or a DNA replication phase uh, like we did in meiosis one. They're just going to go right to that second division. So if you see that division right there, you see that those sister chromatids are actually pulled apart. And now we have four daughter cells total that bear no resemblance to the original parent cell that we had to start this whole thing in meiosis one. So it's very interesting. We've got end of meiosis two, so we've got four daughter cells that are haploid, and they're all genetically different from that original germ cell that we started with. So to go back to that key concept that we started with, uh, genetic variation is, is a, a wonderful thing, and sexual reproduction helps this out very much. And we've got three things that are the main reason for genetic variation. So we have crossing over during prophase one, which is where those homologous chromosomes actually share genetic information and swap between the two of them. And then we have independent assortment during metaphase one, which is where those chromosomes, those homologous chromosomes can line up uh, one next to the other, but in a bunch of different ways, depending on how many chromosomes you have. And then of course there's random fertilization. And that's the concept that only one sperm can get to the egg. And therefore there's a lot of variation within that.